Okay, I have a little mysterious question. Here's a graph of y equals x squared. We know it's a u-shaped graph, symmetrical, going through the origin, looking like this. And here's a graph of y equals x, which you learned from algebra, early algebra days. It's just a diagonal straight line, also going through the origin. And my question is, if some sense, if I could just add these two pictures, or maybe add the two formulas, what is the graph of y equals x squared plus x? Now, I'm going to draw them both on one set of axes, and because I'm going to try to see if I can deduce what's going on. It's going to be something like this. There's the two graphs individually, but I've got to do the combined values. For example, when I put in 1, I'll get 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So it's like I've taken the, the common 1 value and add them both together. It gives me a point up here. If I go out further, adding the x value for the y equals x and the x value for y, sorry, adding the y value for y equals x and the y value for y equals x squared, means I'm basically taking these two outputs and adding them together and get a bigger output. So you can see on the right, that I'll always be adding two positive outputs, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously, there's a graph going up. Let me draw this in a different color. It's a graph going up somewhere on the right. Who knows if it's a straight line or curvy or something? Who knows? Don't know. But in a very broad sense, I'm adding two positive numbers to the right. I'm getting bigger values on the right. The left is scary and weird. If I start adding values for x values to the left, negative x values, one output's positive and one output's negative. So I'll be adding positive and negative values together. And the question is, which one wins? Do the positives always outweigh the negatives, which is some sort of positive curve on the side? Or maybe the negative values, they get pretty down low over here, they might outweigh the positive values, which is the graph starts going down here. Or maybe they balance each other out perfectly, it becomes just a nice level graph, always zero. So the only way out of this predicament, since I can't seem to just reason my way through it, is to go back to basics. And there's no shame in it, as I keep saying. Let's just plot some points. Put in x, put in y. Uh, 0, 1, 2, I think the positives are not too scary. 0 squared plus 0 is 0. Uh, 1 squared plus 1 is 2. 2 squared plus 2 is 6, and so on. Definitely getting bigger. It's the things on this side that I'm wondering about. Negative 1, negative 2. Negative 1 squared is 1, plus negative 1 is 0. Oh, it's zero. Uh, negative two squared is four, plus negative two is uh, two. So it's zero, and now it's two. Uh, let's put in negative three. Terrible board technique. Negative three squared is nine, plus negative three is six. It's looking curious. Negative four squared, 16, plus negative four is 12. It looks like it's going up on this side, except it was zero at x equals zero, and zero at x equals negative one makes me wonder what's going on in between 0 and negative 1. Let's try x equals negative a half. Negative half times negative half, that's a positive quarter, plus negative a half. What's that? A quarter take away half is y is negative a quarter. It's going under. It looks like maybe, oh actually when x is 1 it was 1 squared plus 2 again. When x was 2 it was 2 squared plus 2 is 6 again. It looks like it's just another symmetrical u-shaped graph. That is weird. If you add a symmetrical u-shaped graph and a diagonal line which is kind of asymmetrical, positive on one side and negative on the other side, there's no reason I believe that those two things will combine again to be another perfectly symmetrical graph. And what's weird, it's not symmetrical about what was the middle before, it now seems to be symmetrical at, what was it, x equals negative a half? Bizarre. So the question is, what is this graph? It, is it really a U-shaped graph at x equals negative half shifted down to what, negative a quarter we said? That is, I know a formula for that from the previous session. Is it really y equals x plus a half squared? Uh -huh. Remember, x is behaving like negative a half, it's zeros, minus a quarter? Is that actually the original graph? Well, I'll change colors. We can test it. I have this conjecture, just by looking at the picture, it's just the graph with x equals negative a half behaving like zero. Boom. Everything shifted down by negative a quarter. Is that really the same formula as what we started with? Well, let me just do the quick box method on it. Let's actually uh, see this thing for what it is. x plus a half squared. x inches and half an inch. x inches and half an inch. If I actually draw out the details, x times x is x squared. Half times x. Half times x. And half times half is a quarter. So x plus a half squared minus that quarter, I guess that's along for the ride, is an x squared piece, plus a half x plus a half x, that's an x, plus a quarter, 
with that minus a quarter for long for the ride is indeed x squared plus x. x squared plus x squared is the symmetrical u-shaped graph that's just been messed around with. That's actually a surprise. That's a shock. So what I need to do in this section is keep playing this. Is taking a u-shaped graph and a straight line graph, adding them together, always going to give us another u-shaped graph. So let me clean my board, we'll do a couple more examples, and then we'll see what's going on. One moment then. Okay, let's do another example. Let's look at y equals x squared plus 4x minus 3. Here it is, it's a symmetrical u-shaped graph, y equals x squared, and I'm adding to it a straight line graph, y equals 4x minus 3. Will that be just another version of y equals x squared that got messed around with? Well, let's find out. Let me do the box method. I love the box method. Let's look at this quadratic part we've got. It's got an x squared piece, which must come from x and x. Two pieces of the same make 4x, so it must be 2x and 2x. Something times x is 2x, that better be a 2. Something times x is 2x, that better be a 2 as well. 2 times 2 is 4, so I want the number 4 here. Curiously, I don't have the number 4, I have negative 3. So let me add 7 to both sides. y plus 7 is x squared plus 4x plus 4. And why do I like that? This 4x plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 is precisely this box. y plus 7 is x plus 2 squared, which means if I just bring y, make y by itself, subtract 7 from both sides, y is actually x plus 2 squared minus 7. Yes! This u-shaped graph plus a straight line is indeed y equals x squared again, messed around with. But I see it's negative 2, it's behaving like 0 for the x values. So all the actions now happening at x equals negative 2 um, is, is that quadratic x squared um, again, shift at negative 2, but everything's brought down 7 units. So actually it's going to be a symmetrical u-shaped graph looking like that. Again, a u-shaped graph plus a straight line is another symmetrical u. Let's do another example. I'll clean my... All right, let's do a juicy example this time. Let's do something with some steepness in it. I'll make it a negative steepness. Uh, negative three x squared, whoops, let's make it minus x plus one. So there again, there's an upside down symmetrical u-shaped graph plus a linear line, negative x plus one. Is that gonna be again a u-shaped graph? Is it really just y equals x squared messed around with? All right, I'm gonna do the box method. Box method's my friend, symmetry is great. Uh, I don't like negative 3x squared. I want that to be a perfect square. So let's multiply through by negative 3. So negative 3y equals, what, 9x squared plus 3x minus 3. I'm a little worried about this odd number here in the middle. What we decide to do is multiply through by 4. Negative 12y is 36x squared plus uh, 12x minus 12. Uh, let's do the box method and what we've got for the quadratic part. All right, now I'm going to be a little bit sneaky here. I've never had a little uh, steepness factor going on within the parentheses. That just uh, freaks me out a little bit. But I will notice on the side that 6x plus 1, I could write it as 6 times x plus 1 sixth. So if I square it, I have to square all of that. And I actually get, what would it be, 36 times x plus a half squared. I'm doing that because it makes it very clear that I seem to be in a situation where x equals negative half. It's behaving like zero. Uh, is that right? 1, 6, I'm saying, silly me. x equals negative 6 is behaving like 1, 0. I actually can see it there, but I thought I'd make it very explicit by just having this factor of 6 come out and be very clearly out the way. There's my steepness of 36, it looks like. All right, let's get y all by itself. Oh, actually, I'm going to have some trouble here. I shouldn't say that. Uh, let's subtract 13 from both sides. Negative 12y equals 36x plus 1, 6 squared minus uh, 13. Divide by negative 12, that's why I have to adjust myself, that's not the steepness, because dividing by negative 12 makes negative 3x plus 1 6 squared uh, plus 13 twelfths. There's my steepness. The steepness is negative 3, silly me. All right, so the original question was, was this upside down U-shaped graph plus a straight line, again another symmetrical U-shaped graph? You bet it is. It has x equals negative 1 6, behaving like 0 for the x values. It's a steepness of negative 3, so it's going to be fairly steep and upside down, and everything's shifted up by 13 twelfths. Yes, it is a symmetrical U-shaped graph. In fact, we could play this game and do exactly the same work, and if you want up for it, you could actually prove that the box method will show that any equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, that is some U-shaped graph of the steepness a plus some line, is always going to be another symmetrical u-shaped graph. It's just going to be y equals x squared 
messed around with.